And here's where we make it out to. Jean? Rod has also written a comedy guide entitled The Wonderful World of Climate Change, which uses words and images to help people understand causes and effects and what they can do to help. We're going to do some science. Then we're going to do some history, some science. And to do that, before the universe began, there was nothing. So, Ben, I need you to get down on your little tippy toes and to do a little ball of nothing, Ben. OK, here we go. Ba, 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 Starting with the Big Bang, the audience helps recreate the history of the Earth, its early days being battered with meteors, the steady passing of time that saw the arrival and departure of dinosaurs, formation of continents, and of course, the arrival of humans, our rapid expansion and slow poisoning of the planet. The oceans take in CO2, and little things inside the ocean break it up into C and two O's. There's another O. And some of the O's stay in the ocean and some of the O's go into the air. But now there's so much CO2 in the oceans, they can no longer absorb it, so it's turning into acid. We're getting carbolic acid in the ocean, which is dissolving the smallest of our pl planktony, uh, photocytic thing thing things in the tiny little thing, <laughs> which are disappearing. And other life forms depend on that. And the oceans are dying. The Great Barrier Reef will be dead by 2030. There goes the Queensland tourism industry. And once that collapses, all those Victorians who left during the Kennet years <laughs> will want to come back. And I say to them, no! We stuck Kennet out, you didn't, you can't get in, so we build a wall to keep the Queenslanders out. I try and send them away hopeful, I mean there's no point saying it, it is hopeless, um, but equally I, I hope they go away and they talk about it and they do something about it, because there's just not enough people who know about it and getting the message out um, is really difficult. The scientists are not skilled in talking to the public about it. Um, and equally, journalists aren't skilled in interpreting the science. And if I'm anything to go by, it takes a fair bit of your time to actually dig down into it all and, and get a real understanding of what's happening. That's what's happening to southeastern Australia. It's getting drier and drier and drier and drier because we're one degree hotter. And the reason for that is because the average temperature of the globe is only 14.7 degrees C. That, so if you so one degree over 14.7, if you multiply that by 100 over 1, you get 50 there and you get 7.35 there. And then you divide that by 2, you get 25, which gives you 3 point so, 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 and you divide, you get 12.5, and that gives you a 1.7, it equals a percentage. Okay, it equals a percentage. Now, if that doesn't worry you, look at this. 100 over 1 times 220 gives you 50. Divide that by, which gives you 1, carry the 1 as 18, 155, and you divide that by 20, and it equals another percentage. Now, if you're not worried, consider that in less than a minute, two percentages. This is serious, okay? <laughs> We are now getting to the stage... But it's not just the audience's ability to handle such disturbing subject matter that is an issue. For people like Rod, who have chosen to face and warn others about the realities of climate change, the emotional toll on them can be great. It has been really, really hard to do this show about climate change because once you understand what's happening, you go through... You, go, you literally go through the stages of grieving. Like a year or so ago I did a show about this, or half a show about climate change, and I went home after that show every night depressed. I mean, deeply, deeply depressed. And I thought every night, that can't be right, it can't be happening, it just can't be happening. So every night I go home, I get onto the NASA website and the Hadley Centre and the Potsdam Institute and the Woods Hole Centre and I do all this research into it and I learn about the carbon cycle and methane and uh, all the things that go into climate and every night I go away and I think, well, yes, it is happening. So I'd go back and I'd try and make it funny the next night and I'd get depressed about it and the audience would oh, it was just hell. So it's, yeah, as I said, it's, I think it, it is the only thing worth talking about at any level in society now. And what we stand to lose is we stand to lose everything. The Himalayas, the great ice caps of the Himalayas, 80% melted or in the process of melting within 30 years. 
They supply the water to the Mekong, to the Yangtze, um, to the Indus, to the Ganges, to the Brahmaputra. All the great rivers of Asia are fed from the Himalayas and they're melting. They're melting and the water's going to run out and three billion people will have no food and no water. And what do we go? I mean, I would take them in, but I've got a country person. I can't take them in. The one thing you, you don't want is, I mean, I depend so much on word of mouth um, to get people to sell tickets to my show or to, for people to buy tickets to my show. And on the basis of word of mouth, if people go away and say, that was so depressing. I laughed, but it was so depressing. You're not going to sell a lot of tickets to a show like that. In fact, I've noticed it already in the, the ticket sales that, you know, that's really the committed people who are coming and uh, everybody, because I've been very frank about them. As I said, I've been very frank about the science of it. When I do interviews, I haven't gone there and said, come along, this is the funniest show you'll ever see. I've done all the interviews on the basis of get up off your ass and do something or you'll die. And that's, you know, that's not a spoonful of sugar. But uh, you're going to be the domestic sector, OK? Mr and Mrs Average Australian, in your little suburban home with your electricity and your gas. Uh, you're the uh, industrial transport sector and you're the agricultural sector, OK? Um, now, you're the uh, domestic sector. All the ads on telly are aimed at you, are they not? Every ad about climate change is about him. I can't not do nothing. Um, it is very tempting to say to people, look, just eat, drink and be merry and just have a really great time and, you know, at some stage it's going to stop, but before it stops you'll, you'll just have so much fun. And there will be people who choose to do that out of ignorance or deliberately, but no, you, you can't... Look, I, I'm, I'm deeply attached... I'm, I, I suppose the thing that seduces me most in the world is the human mind and the extraordinary capacity of the human mind to create and to examine. And so the, the show starts with photographs from the Hubble Space Telescope. And I think they're just miracles. I mean, I could sit and watch those photographs forever. And what we stand to lose is we stand to lose everything. We stand to lose everything from the Sistine Chapel to the loaf of bread on your table. Everything will go, 10,000 years of um, civilization will just evaporate and by the end of the century optimists say two billion people will be able to survive and pessimists say 500 million and that's a lot of people to die in one century. I'll, uh, I'll wrap up now. The, the one question that I had, because um, people don't ask a lot of questions at the end, but one person asked me, um, having gone through all of this, they said to me, what are you doing about it? And I said, well, my job is to stand on stage in front of groups of people and go, do something for Christ's sake, do something. That's my job, OK? I've done that now, so I'll meet you in the bar. Thank you very much for coming. No, I'm, I'm just really committed to it. I'm like, look, I was committed to, I've been committed to the forests, I've been committed to the refuges, I've been committed to um, overseas aid and all sorts of things, but this one, yeah. This is the battle to end all battles, I think. And I do, as I said, I just wish I had a much, much louder voice. Uh, I've got a megaphone and still it's not loud enough. <laughs>